Coffee fuels most of my academic work. I can't write without a cup and I certainly cannot study without one. Given we're all reliant on this stimulant, a mild cocaine of sorts, I've got two questions. How does it work on my brain? And how does daily consumption of this stuff affect my health? We're talking about coffee. Caffeine is in a class of drugs that we call the psychoactive stimulant. People will buy it because it has drugs in it. Coffee. 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 Most of us have our coffee for the effects of caffeine. We didn't get enough sleep the night before, so what's the solution again? A uh, large cappuccino, please, sir. Caffeine makes us less sleepy, and to understand how, we need to understand this thing called adenosine. Adenosine builds up in the brain throughout the day, making us relax and feel tired. When we sleep, it's then flushed from the brain, leaving us nice and refreshed. When we have those horrible nights sleep, however, it doesn't budge from our system. Then we have our dose of the good stuff. The caffeine enters our brains and blocks the effects of adenosine, increasing our alertness. And it's just what we needed for that intense study session. As we age, there's an inevitable decline in our cognitive abilities. It's sad, but it's coming for everyone. A study in 2019 found that habitual coffee drinking caused a measurable attenuation of neurocognitive decline associated with normal aging and neurodegenerative disorders. So my first question following that was, what are these neurodegenerative disorders that coffee is protecting us from? And the answer was that it can reduce the risk of Parkinson's disease by 24 to 30%. Another series of studies found a decreased risk of Alzheimer's disease in people who habitually drink coffee. So it helps keep our brain functioning well in later life. But caffeine's also been shown to increase our long-term memory. So that's why it could be useful when we study. However, a lot of people use it to try and increase their attention span while they're studying and keep them studying for longer. It has no impact on short-term memory, information processing, planning, and attention. So while I think it's helping me to concentrate while I'm studying, it actually isn't, technically. That's probably a placebo effect. Turns out that these two substances, alcohol and caffeine, can have surprising impacts on our sleep. Caffeine can interfere with our sleep cycle, and I'm sure we've all been there. As we know, it disrupts the adenosine accumulation that makes us tired, especially if consumed close to bedtime. Caffeine specifically reduces the time we spend in deep, restful sleep, stopping us from feeling refreshed after. Sleep is so, so important. It's essential for our immune system functioning, for muscle repair, for creativity, and deprivation causes problems with learning, memory, problem solving, and emotional regulation. In his book, Why We Sleep, Matt Walker states that when we sleep less than six hours per night, time to physical exhaustion drops by 10 to 30%, and aerobic output is significantly reduced. That's just one example of making gains by drinking coffee, but then quickly losing them by losing sleep. So how do we get the benefits of drinking coffee whilst also not affecting sleep? Well. A study found that when having coffee six hours before bed, participants slept an hour less per night. So this was much worse when drinking closer to bedtime. After about five to six hours, 50% of that caffeine that you had is still circulating in your system. So if we have our coffee early in the day, then we allow the coffee to be broken down. Coffee is great for your brain, unless it affects your sleep. It reduces the risk of type 2 diabetes, brain and heart disease, while increasing your long-term memory, capacity to burn fat and reaction time. However, none of these effects are worth it if it's affecting your sleep. Losing sleep has a profoundly negative impact on the body. So all of those accrued benefits that you've gained from drinking coffee immediately lost if it's affecting your sleep. Providing time for the coffee to be broken down allows us to simultaneously utilize the benefits of drinking coffee and effective sleep. 
Before 2 p.m. works for me, but try it out for yourself and let me know what works for you in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe for more content just like this, and I will see you very soon.